Welcome to another episode of Life and Whiskey. As always, I'm Jordan, and today, this is video number four on how to hunt elk revisited. Um, and we are going to look at George Dickel number eight. Uh, I could not find a an age statement on here anywhere. Um, I kind of looked, but only half-heartedly. Um, so I'm going to say for now this is an NAS whiskey. I did not put the effort in during this series to research each one of these whiskeys in depth. Um, kind of a fan of the Dickel so far. Uh, it's been pretty good. This is one of their cheaper budget ones, 40% uh, 80 proof. Um, I do have to say they kind of went all out on their marketing play here. It, they used all the uh, catchphrases. Handcrafted, smooth sipper, um, chill filtered, small batch, blah, 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 blah. All of those words mean absolutely nothing as far as actually having a, a, uh, a specific meaning to them. It's just marketing. But um, I think it's going to be a pretty good uh, whiskey depending or based on the other George Dickels I have had. So let's get into it. Let's see what old number eight here has to offer us. And, um, and then we'll get into today's topic of conversation um, revolving around how to hunt elk and uh, the life portion of this video. So, as you know, I'm just going to kind of burn through this whiskey review because that's not the main uh, focus of these videos uh, in this series here. But nonetheless, I'd like you to, you know, get an idea of some new whiskeys to try out there. So on the nose I get corn dust. Um, a little bit of brown sugar. It still has a little bit of a floral component to it. Mm, almost like a nail polish at the very end. Um, it's kind of that nail polish note's almost a mixture of a, like a floral and an ethanol together. It's a uh, it's interesting, but it's really, really subtle. It's it's mostly a, a floral finish on the end. Um, it's almost presenting like a rye note, like a classic rye or a Sazerac rye. Kind of interesting. All right. Kind of interesting. It's floral forward really quick note then it moves into like this sweet creamy caramel uh, that's really strong um, and both of those notes are backed by an ethanol retronasal burn I guess I would say and it may have been the way that I drank it it kinda came back up in there but um but I definitely pull out a little bit of ethanol which is weird because it's on the lower side um, and then um, you still kind of get uh, the corn dust. Corn dust is, is like the main flavor that I'm getting. So you get floral, caramel forward, and then those are like boom, boom, real quick notes. And then that middle is just like heavy corn dust and, um, and some brown sugar before moving into the finish. It's interesting that I choose to always look down. Like I got my my notes here for for whatever but uh, when I'm trying to come up with things I'm looking down and I keep flashing my bald head at you guys so cheers to that floral corn dust sweet caramel and then the finish goes oak dry just a touch of pepper and all that's underlain with the brown sugar. So there's actually several, several distinct notes in here. Um, it is pretty smooth and rounded. Um, nothing real spiky, nothing really bitey, and nothing out of the ordinary. But, you know, for a fairly cheap bourbon, um, you know, I, I got this for $16.09 here in Wyoming. Very nice, very drinkable, very sippable. Uh, I'm sure that if you, you know, went through an entire glass of this, you'd probably end up picking out even more stuff as it, as it sat, as you sat with it. Um, it's just a really, really nice whiskey. Um, 
you know, it is a bourbon, but it's a Tennessee whiskey, so it's a bourbon with the Lincoln County process uh, done to it. Um, and uh, it's pretty good. I, I, would, I would highly recommend this. So uh, if you can, please drop in the comments below what you can find a bottle of Dickel Number no. 8 for in your area um, so that, you know, people around the country can look at this and kind of get an idea of um, what price to expect on stuff. So, um yeah, if you got any comments about about the dickle, please uh, please let me know. Cause so far I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna have one more before I uh, dive into my topic of conversation here. That's pretty nice. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Okay, so video number four. Here we go. We're gonna talk about. I titled it "Health and Luxuries." Um, it's probably more heavy on the health side of things uh, than it is on the luxury side. And by luxuries, I mean like some small things that you might take with you on a backpack hunt or even while you're just out hunting in general um, that uh, could be considered a luxury. They're definitely not necessities. Um, but they all serve a purpose and they all have a benefit. So the very first thing I have here is... Um, emergencies, the little powdered vitamin packets, um, or some kind of vitamin substitute. Um, while you're out elk hunting, um, especially if you're coming from a lower elevation, say you're up around eight to 10,000 feet, that's gonna be extremely taxing on your body. You're gonna be, your heart rate's gonna be up. You're gonna be, um, your respiration rate's gonna be up. Um, the amount of oxygen you're actually getting into your blood cells until you acclimate, it's going to take, you know, maybe two, three days to fully acclimate to that. Um, all of those are stressing your body. Add to that the temperature variances. It might be 90 degrees during the day and 30 degrees at night or 40 degrees at night. Um, you might run into rain. You might run into snow. All of the elements are going to be working against you uh, in, a, in a large degree. Uh, while you're out on the side of a mountain. So having a vitamin substitute is extremely important, at least I think it is. I'm not a doctor or a health professional, so what do I know? But my experience has been I have actually gone on hunts with a cold and two or three days later, uh, you know, knock that cold off where I know if I had been, you know, in my day-to-day -day life, um, it probably would have hung around for a week or two. Uh, I sleep much, much better at the end of the day because I've exhausted all my energy and I'm ready to just hit the pillow and be out. You're out in the elements all day long. So I find I get more and better sleep. I find um, that, you know, <clears throat> I'm not exposed to as many germs um, from other people because you're out in the woods by yourself. But having a vitamin substitute is going to help. Um, along with that, um, so the emergencies are great because they also, like, that's my drink in the morning. I don't take the time to make coffee, even though I'm a big coffee drinker and stuff like that. I literally make a, a, a travel mug of emergency. So I add water and the powder together, and I set it aside for the morning. In the morning when I wake up, it's two tortillas that um, have peanut butter and honey on them wrapped up. That's breakfast. And I slug that mug of emergency, so I get some vitamins, I get some liquid in me. And the nice thing about the emergency is it flavors that water, so you're not trying to just choke down water. Which, I mean, I like water, it's fine, but um, it's a little bit easier to drink and drink more of it if it has a little bit of a pleasant flavor to it. So, another benefit. Um, another thing along the vitamin thing, yeah, you can take pills if you want, uh, but really at that point the only benefit you're getting are are the actual vitamins, minerals, nutrients you need, um, which, don't get me wrong, is a great, great benefit, but like if you eat gummies or something like that, you get a little bit of mouth pleasure with it. Um, you know, say you eat a gummy and, and then drink some water, again, you get a little bit of flavoring out of it, something like that. If you eat a gummy, you can make it last a little bit longer, so, you know, you got something to suck on or chew on or whatever for a couple of minutes while you're hiking or something like that. So, all things to consider, but definitely take some kind of a vitamin supplement of some sort along with you. I think it'll be a great benefit, um, and like I said... Sometimes it's just great. I mean, if you're uh, pumping water, filtering water from like an elk wall or something like that, well, let me tell you, 
the water is going to be about as unpleasant as possible, and you're going to be looking to put something in there that's going to make it not taste like crap as much as possible. Yeah, it won't get you sick, and it won't kill you, but it sure as heck isn't going to be easy to stomach it either. So, something to think about. Um, another thing, oh, let me write this down before I forget. Uh, okay, another one uh, along that same um, plane of existence is some kind of a, a, a protein powder or a, um, a recovery aid. And what I mean by that is some kind of powder mix. Again, um, it's good to have the powders because they tend to be flavored and the flavors will help you drink more water, which you need to be doing. Um, but then that protein, at the end of the day, I mean, a protein powder basically... If you're out hiking in the woods all day, you're, you're, you're basically doing two or three full body workouts in the gym. So um, you're burning a lot of calories. Your muscles are getting shredded. They're going to be tired. You got a lot of acid buildup in your muscles. You got all these negative things going against you. Um, you know, vitamin C will help get rid of some of that lactic acid and other stuff like that. Protein will help your muscles recover. Um, so some, so you got the, the health benefits of having that stuff, and, but then, again, it, it flavors the water and it helps you get more water down. So something to consider, um, having some kind of a, a protein drink or a, a, you know, a protein powder or, a, a, you know, like the Mountain Ops recovery stuff. Um, I haven't used that stuff all that much, so I don't really know a whole lot about it, but something you might want to look into is something like that. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, and uh, also, like I make, uh, like if you go back into some of the other videos, I made those. I call them the Kuyu Energy Bars because Kuyu, uh, you know, had the recipe on their website. Um, but like you can take those energy bars, and a great way to get like a protein powder um, mixed in is you can mix those into, you know, bars or cookies or whatever. So you, now you got more protein in there, and you got more calories in there, and uh, you got, a, a, you know, like if you get the chocolate protein powder now you got some chocolate flavor mixed in with stuff something to think about um so you can mix it in with foods and whatever else uh, and kind of come up with your own concoctions you might want to try them out at home before um thinking you got the latest greatest whatever out on the mountainside because you might mix some things together and find out that they're absolutely disgusting and that might be your only meal for the day, so uh, you'll have to end up choking it down no matter what. So something to play with, something to think about, but I think um, I think it would be pretty good for you. Um, another uh, little luxury item. Um, so I always carry a grouse arrow with me. So this is just a crappy arrow. It's not. It's one that I found out at the range, but it still uh, has its integrity. Um, you know, so it's not going to break on me or anything like that, but it's not cut to my length. It's two inches longer. I think it's a full length arrow. Um, it's not quite the right spine. I shoot a 300 spine. I think it's a 340. Um, the, the, the grains per inch of the arrow is less than what I shoot. Um, so everything about it's just kind of wrong. Um, and if I lost it or it blew up or whatever, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. So I carry this arrow. I tip it with a two and a half inch cutting diameter expandable broadhead. Uh, and I use it for shooting grouse because if you've never eaten grouse, let me tell you, they are some of the best table fare that's out there as far as wild game birds go. Um, in the mountains, you're going to find rough grouse, blue grouse, spruce grouse, uh, Franklin's grouse, uh, the dusky grouse, Franklin's grouse, spruce grouse. Those are all kind of the same species. But um, there's, there's grouse to be had, and in many, many, many mountain ranges, there's a lot of them. And so um, they're kind of dumb. Uh, in fact, I was out hiking a couple of weeks ago. I literally could have grabbed one. It was only three feet away from me, and it would not move. Um, they're kind of dumb here in the mountains, so they're easy to get. You can throw a stick at them or a rock and get one uh, without hardly any effort, but it's nice to have an arrow to be able to shoot at those grouse. And as I mentioned in one of my other videos, I think it was the first one, I, I tip my grouse arrow with a broadhead specifically so that if that's the last arrow in my quiver and I need to finish off an animal, I can. Um... It also doesn't hurt to carry a judo point or some kind of blunt point um, in your pack that you can, you know, I mean, the birds don't scare off very easy. So you have plenty of time to unscrew a broadhead and screw on one of those if you so desire. 
and and shoot a bird with those. They're very effective as well. They won't bury into a tree. You can practice shoot on stumps and stuff and not have to worry about losing or blowing up an arrow if you want to do it that way. Um, but carry something for grouse. And then with that, the luxury item is then the seasoning. Carry uh, Tony Sashery's. They make um, like these little packets now with the Tony Sashery seasoning in it. That's like my go-to for birds. If I'm making a turkey, I take butter and Tony Sashery's mixed together, inject that bird with it, and deep fry it. Um, but, uh, you know, the Tony Sashery's, it's a great creel seasoning you can put on stuff. Or just straight up salt and pepper, you can mix it up, throw it in a, um, in a Ziploc bag or something like that. Whatever your favorite seasoning is, throw a little bit in your backpack. It's always good to have on hand um, for, sh for shooting grouse or, or and, and, you know, cook a grouse up over a, a campfire or a, a jet boil or something like that. Um, it's kind of nice to have that. You can throw a bird into a, into a jet boil, boil it down, make some soup out of it, um, throw some seasoning in there. Life's pretty good that way. I've done that. Uh, I brought potatoes with me, wrapped them in tin foil, threw them in the fire, threw a bird on, uh, on a stick and roasted it and had potatoes and grouse. Uh, that's a pretty awesome meal on the side of a mountain. Um, so just carrying a little bit of seasoning with you. Yes, it's a luxury. Um, but it's super nice to have, especially after, you know, like day five of Mountain House or dehydrated meal or whatever. It's nice to put a little bit of flavoring with those as well. So something to think about, carrying some, some sort of flavoring. Um, what else here is the protein part? Uh, <clears throat> something <laughs> to definitely pay attention to, uh, if you use a jet boil, it's kind of nice. Uh, I use something called a Fire Maple, I think, let me, yeah, Fire Maple, that's the brand, it's exactly what a jet boil is, only it only cost me like 35 bucks instead of $135, uh, so it's a little bit cheaper, but extremely nice, uses the little gas canisters you screw onto it, um, the gas canister fits inside, uh, has a little, uh, but, um, not rubber, but uh, silicone lid that snaps over the top of the, the, um, the pot. But if you're going out and you don't have a jet boil or something like that, um, <clears throat> where it's a self-contained pot and gas system, uh, make sure you do not forget your pot. All right, you won't be able to cook anything in it or anything, and it's really hard to get your, you know, heat your water for your dehydrated meal or um, the other benefit of having that pot is, you know, if you come across water and it's your only option, you can boil it and drink it so that you can, you know, keep enough water on you to, to, to keep going. You know, that's the whole point. If you're doing a backpack hunt, make sure you keep, you, you have, double check you have some sort of cooking utensil, whether it's a pot or a cup or whatever it is that is fire safe you can put on there. Uh, that way you can either throw it on the fire if you're desperate or put it on your cooking stove unit and make what you need to make. Um, also, you can use that pot to drink out of or, you know, cook, like I said, soup or food or whatever and eat out of it, um, <clears throat> but drinking out of it. Uh, if you want, um, you know, bring a Nalgene bottle or a travel coffee mug or something like that to mix a drink up in while you're walking you know, or while you're you're camping out, you know, something that's super light that you can throw in your pack, um, so that you can have your pot to cook in and your your mug or whatever to drink in. But uh, if you get desperate or you want to just cut down on the weight, you can just use your cook pot for to serve both purposes. But something to think about: make sure that it is in either your cook system while you're at camp. Um, but if you're doing a backpack hunt and you're going to be gone for a week, you want to definitely make sure you have it in your pack before you leave camp. Um, another thing, some hygiene stuff, uh, you know, I like to bring, you know, a little toothbrush, some toothpaste, uh, floss, because, you know, what it's like to get shit stuck in your teeth. Um, yeah, you can whittle a toothpick or something like that out of a tree branch if you have to. Floss doesn't weigh anything, especially the little samples that you get from the dentist when you go get your teeth cleaned, so something to think about plus you can use it as serving material to fix some stuff on your bow if you absolutely have to I've done it before it works out really well um, also something that a lot of people don't think about I in particular am an extremely light sleeper um, even in when I'm exhausted sometimes I have little bouts of insomnia um, and uh, also the the woods is not a quiet place at night very often. 
Um, and if you're hyper vigilant, like if you're in grizzly country or something like that, or maybe if you're just out in black bear country and you're not used to stuff moving around um, while you're sleeping, um, sometimes it can be a little bit rough to sleep. So I will recommend uh, that you slip a little pair of earplugs into your your you know hygiene kit, whatever it is. So I, I normally in mine I have earplugs, I have um, toothpaste and a toothbrush, and some floss. Uh, I keep that scented uh, scent eliminating deodorant in there, and then. Um, Oh, what the heck was the last one I was going to say? Oh, and then I do keep, you know, some ibuprofen because you can have a headache while you're out there and life's pretty miserable if you have a headache. Uh, it's also a sign of altitude sickness, so something to keep your mind or keep watch of. But, you know, having a couple of ibuprofen on you um, that you can take if your muscles are sore or uh, you're getting a headache or you just need to dull some pain, um, that's a pretty good thing. I also have some allergies, so I carry some allergy pills with me just in case. Uh, and then I've never used them, um, but if you need to, I carry some like Tylenol or Advil PM, some kind of a sleep aid with me. Um, I'm kind of against it, but you know, if I get desperate for sleep sometime, if my energy level's high and my anxiety's high and um, you know whatever, and I'm really having trouble sleeping. Uh, a good night's sleep is hard to replace, and so I, I want them there in case I need them, and oftentimes I have them so that people I'm with, if they're having trouble, I can give them the, the pills as well. So I'll carry some sort of a sleep aid with me as well. So some painkillers, a sleep aid, um, you know, I keep all that stuff is, you know, just a couple of pills. Um, you know, I don't try and rely on it if possible, but I got it if I need it kind of a thing. So, um... But making sure I got earplugs in there and, and something something else, you know, sleep aid to try and help me get some sleep if I need it. Um, so that's uh, some things that you might want to think about. Uh, you might want to have some kind of a little hygiene kit put together, keep it with you. Um, but uh, those things will definitely help you out. I know uh, my <clears throat> first year here in Wyoming when I went elk hunting, um, I had a, an elk, a young bull, bugling I don't know, 100, 150 yards from my truck uh, all night long. I mean, all night. I didn't get it. If I got 20 minutes of sleep, I, th I would say I was doing pretty pretty good. And that was after I had bonked and burnt through all my energy and was just exhausted the day before. So it was just a miserable two days. Um, and I don't recommend that for anybody. So um, that's something. Uh, last year when I took my wife out with me, um, the coyotes were having a heyday, you know, maybe 300 yards from the camp, and there was a good 15 of them or so, and they were kind of playing grab ass all night, hooting and hollering and running around and doing whatever. Um, so, you know, just be aware, the woods are not quiet. There's other hunters. There's other people. Some people aren't hunting. They might be out driving their four-wheeler around at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. They might be setting off fireworks or doing something else stupid, or they might just be another camp over drinking and having a couple beers or whatever at midnight while you're trying to sleep a couple hundred yards away. Um, just things to consider. Um, or a thunderstorm rolls in. Whatever. Uh, you might want to consider it anyways. Um, if you're like me and you're pretty vigilant about things, every noise you kind of wake up to, um, it all depends how bad I am or how, it's, it's like, how vigilant do I need versus how much, how bad do I need the sleep? And, you know, if I'm in gris country, I feel like the sleep can get put on hold and I need to be more vigilant and more of aware of what I'm hearing around me. So I don't put earplugs in or something like that. But if I'm desperate, earplugs go in and I'm just like, whatever, the bear can eat me, whatever. Um... Again, with that hygiene kit, there's a lot of smells in there. It's toothpaste smells, flosses, often mint. That'll smell. Um, the deodorant, uh, it doesn't have a smell, but I'm going to throw it into the smell category anyways. Those pills have a smell. All that stuff are bear attractants. So, um, you know, have a little kit or a shave kit or something like that. Take that bag, throw it in with your food bag, and hang that at night if you're doing a backpack hunt. Uh, make sure that's with your food source away from camp. Um, downwind from camp so in case a bear decides to try and find it it's not in your camp so stuff to think about anyways uh, that's kind of all I have for this particular section we're running 25 minutes that's plenty for this video um, but 
you know, hopefully you found some value in that information. If you have some questions or if you have a couple, you know, your two cents to, to offer up as well, something to think about, drop it in the comments below. would love to hear from you. Uh, let me know what you think about uh, George Dickel number eight here and what you can find it for in your area. Again, I got it for uh, $16.09 here in Wyoming, and I'd say it's a pretty decent whiskey, so go ahead and give it a try. Thanks for watching, as always. I appreciate uh, everything. If you find this con content useful, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, uh, post it on Facebook. Um, pretty soon you'll be able to find me on Minds.com, uh, or you already can find me on Minds.com. It's life underscore and underscore whiskey. Um, and I am not going to do Facebook. I'm giving the old F you to Facebook, and I'm kind of done with that. I will keep posting my content on YouTube, and I'm also going to po post it on Minds.com if you want to engage with me. So thanks for watching. You guys have yourselves a great day, and I will catch you in the next video.